Hey, shalom, shalom, mishpocha. Welcome to another edition of the Half Torah Hashings. This Half Torah Hashings is uh, number 36, Behelotecha, which means when you set up, and it's taken from Zechariah chapter 2, verses 10, all the way to chapter 4, verse 7. Now, uh, there's a lot of intricate, de detailed things in this Half Torah portion that I don't want to miss, so if you'll please permit me, I'm going to read it uh, directly from my commentary. This is a quote, believe it or not, from Chabad.org, which is a Hasidic um, uh, sect of Judaism that doesn't believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, but it says, This half tour portion contains a vision of the golden temple menorah, whose daily kindling is discussed in the opening of this week's Torah reading. This prophecy was communicated by Zechariah shortly before the building of the second temple. The prophet describes a scene in the heavenly court. Satan was seeking to incriminate Joshua, the first high priest, to serve in the second temple because of the soiled garments, or the sin, uh, he was wearing. God himself defends the high priest. God then proceeds to outline the rewards awaiting Joshua uh, if he and his descendants followed God's ways. The ultimate reward is, Behold, I will bring my servant, the shoot, and this is an allusion to Mashiach, the shoot of David, of David. Zechariah then describes a vision of the golden seven-branch menorah. An angel interprets the meaning of this vision. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, descendant of King David, one of the protagonists in the building of the second temple. Not by military force and not by physical strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Meaning that Zerubbabel's descendant, Mashiach, will have no difficulty in his task. Um, it will be as, as simple as lighting a menorah. Now Numbers chapter 8 verses 5 through 7 parallels Zechariah chapter 3 verses 1 through 10 in that there is a cleansing and a consecration and a birth and rebirth of the Levitical priesthood. Numbers 9 uh, deals with the menorah and Zechariah 4 deals with the menorah, thus the reason it was chosen for this half Torah portion. Now, Radok, a uh, sage in a commentary of old, says about Zechariah 3.1, The confrontation between Joshua and Satan represents the contention between the Jews who were trying to rebuild the temple and the local chieftains who tried to halt the construction, as described in the fourth chapter of Ezra. Now, it's interesting that the priest Joshua, being Yeshua in Hebrew, and that Yeshua Messiah is also a high priest after the Melchizedekian priesthood order, and that he is being accused or oppressed by Satan. Now, Rashi then says concer concerning verse 2, Joshua survived the Babylonian exile against all odds and returned to Jerusalem. This is an indication of his holiness and righteousness, and hence um, you should not harm him. Now, this is what I have to say about that. Yeshua the Messiah's resurrection is as if he survived an exile of death because of his holiness and righteousness. And, through Yeshua, and, and though Yeshua is harassed, no one can defeat him. Now, Radok says regarding verse 3 that the stain of Joshua's family is that his sons married non-Jews, which is an act forbidden uh, to the Levitical priesthood. Um, and there's a citation of Ezra 10:18. Now Rashi says that verse 4, the angel commands Joshua's sons to leave their foreign wives with the filthy garments removed from, from him. Joshua's innate righteousness was no longer blemished. Now, as Nazari believers and as a nation, a royal nation of priests, um, we are not to be unequally yoked, married, or, or, or connected to or fellowship with unbelievers um, so we're not to, to marry outside the Nazari Jewish faith. This includes not marrying modern-day Christians, which are opposed to the Torah and to Judaism. Now, verse uh, in uh, Zechariah, uh, verses 7 through 10, it's definitely messianic in nature. Radok says that either Zerubbabel or Messiah will complete the rebuilding of the temple. We know prophetically uh, Messiah is to reign in the third temple, which is yet to be built. Now, Zechariah 4, verses 1 through 6, is indeed mysterious uh, because it's talking about these two, two olive trees, and it troubles some. But Rashi says, just as the two olive trees in the vision produce oil, because that is what God created them to do, so Israel would rebuild the temple because that is what God wanted. They did not succeed because of their army or their strength, but because God inspired Darius with a spirit of kindness that provided the initiative for the construction of uh, and a major part of the needed supplies. So, we see that the two olive trees are Darius through Zerubbabel, who in other prophetic passages is called a Messiah, 
Now, this word troubles some, you know, being, you know, Darius being labeled a Messiah. But if you remember, Mashiach is a Hebrew word that means anointed, an anointed one to accomplish a particular task. So, you know, this that's why that Darius was called a lowercase Mashiach. And why Yeshua is called Mashiach is because he is anointed to accomplish a, t a particular task, and that's the salvation of mankind. So um, let me just read that again because I got a little off track there. So the two olive trees are Darius through Zerubbabel, who in other prophetic passages is called a Messiah, anointed one to accomplish a particular task and rebuild the second temple. The other is Yeshua the Messiah, who will bring about the third temple. That's all the time we have for today, so uh, we'll catch you later. Shabbat Shalom and Shavuot Tov, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.